Hello everybody and welcome to Promise Gaming. Let's try Surviving the Aftermath, a newly announced title by Paradox Interactive and apparently the newest installment in the Surviving series. It's a survival colony builder, not exactly a sequel to Surviving Mars, but rather you're trying to survive on a post-apocalyptic Earth. The game is expected to release in late 2020, so in the meantime it is going through an early access period exclusively on the Epic Games Store. Being early access, understand that all features are subject to change, though I wouldn't expect any sweeping changes in the next year or so. A big thank you to Paradox Interactive and all their partners for getting me this early review code before the announcements of Paradox Con so I can familiarize myself with the game. With all that being said, let's go ahead and start up a new game and show you what is involved in surviving the aftermath. Ah, no, we don't need any tutorials. I know what I'm doing. All right, so there are several different aspects to a new game that can increase or decrease the challenge as desired. So you have your environment, you have the survivors themselves, starting resources, etc. If you want to have a game where your environment is extremely easy on you, but you have tons of bandits and meteors falling from the sky, you can do things like that if that's what you want. We're going to go for something fairly middle of the road, I think. So with the starting environment, not everyone remembers what started all of this, but there are lots of catastrophes and people are now turned against each other. We're going to have a world that is desolate and unforgiving. Average temperature and humidity. Fertile soil, only about 25% of the map. Catastrophes. It is a dangerous world, but we will prevail. There are common catastrophes. This really can screw you over horribly. I have literally had giant meteors just fall from the sky and obliterate my buildings. It's very frustrating, actually. Also, there will be an increased contamination level in the map. That's a lot of nuclear fallout that we will have to eventually research the technology to remove, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Starting resources, we'll just say that the trusted car finally broke down, so now we're going to set a base where it broke down. Survivors, band of survivors, seven adults, three children, pretty reasonable. Challenge, we want to have organized bandits? I think we do, and also exploration is going to be a little bit on the difficult side. Gatekeeper, life is unfair, do we want to be the invisible guardian and have someone looking after us? We can have the architect, survivalist, and chaotic. I kind of think of this as like a storyteller from something like RimWorld, so let's take a look at a survivalist who is challenging, but fair, and start up our own visual banner. I'm going to go with... Purple and Liberty. I like it. All right. What do we want to name the colony? Oh, I don't know. How about Edgeburn? And our uh, motto is Adapt and Overcome. Boom. All right. That is our setup. Only 67% difficulty, but I think that is a good start. Okay. Welcome to our new colony. We have a broken down truck, a stockpile of food storage, and 10 homeless colonists. We should probably fix that. So this is our starting map, huh? Looks a little bit bleak. Lots of resources littering the ground, including giant piles of metal and plastic, lumber and concrete. We'll make use of all of that eventually. There's also splotches of nuclear waste, which mostly exists just to get in your way and prevent you from building in that area. But also don't step in it, because I'm sure it's quite hazardous for your health. All right, we have a lot of different resources here at the top. I'll go over it very quickly. We have our colonists over here on the left. 10 colonists in total, but three of them are children and cannot help us, so we have seven working adults left. If your adults do not have an assigned job, then by default they are carriers, which means they're basically going to gather resources off of the ground, build things, transport things between different work sites. They're helpful. You always want to have at least a few carriers, if at all possible. We also will need food and water to sustain them, and energy for high-end buildings. We're not going to worry about that right now. For construction, we have planks, concrete, plastic, and metal. Eventually, we'll get other resources for different refining and high-end uh, technologies. I'm not going to worry about any of that right now. Let's instead worry about building up some structures. Going to the build menu, it works exactly as you think it would. There's a lot of different buildings, and they do different things. We have our shelters, storage, food generation, water generation, resource gathering, resource refining, health and safety, exploration, and even decoration. Though I don't know if this actually does anything. It might be... Maybe it makes the happiness go up for your uh, your citizens. I have no idea. We're going to start with just placing down some tents, though. This does require some plastic and some wood. This does not protect them against any radiation and is easily destroyed by catastrophes. Yep, that is almost certainly going to happen at some point. Now, each one of these does house, I think, two people each. So we're going to need a total of five tents at the beginning of the game, but that seems easy enough to me. Let's go to speed five. They are going to gather resources out of the stockpile, carry it to their construction zone, and then the carriers will begin constructing the tents. You can see they're just materializing out of the ground, like so. It's beautiful. It really is. And this is where they're going to stay overnight. Okay, now we need to worry about gathering up some resources. Let's see. 
One interesting thing here is your stockpiles actually do have a working zone by default. This big circle right here, any resource piles inside of that circle, any carriers will automatically go and gather resources. Now right here, you might look at this and say that's kind of worthless. Well, no problem. We can actually just move the work area somewhere where it is useful. So right here, for example, with a wood pile and a couple of concrete piles. Just go right over there, and if the carriers have nothing else to do, they'll go over here and start gathering the resources off of the ground. We can do the exact same thing here with the food storage. I'll just move this work area over, let's say, here to these three berry bushes, and if people have nothing else to do, they will go and gather up some food. Pretty handy, if you ask me. Uh, eventually, we'll want to get things like a warehouse as well. I guess I can just go ahead and place one right here. It's going to cost me a little bit of concrete, some planks, and some plastic, but I'd like to have a place to store my extra clothes and tools, at least eventually. Then we'll break down this whole broken truck nonsense. I don't think I'm going to need that for pretty much anything. All right, tents are done. Everyone has a home. That's good. They'll be able to sleep, and their happiness will not go down for sleeping on the ground. Let's take a look at some food generation, because we know we will need that. So a small field is an obvious immediate solution. If we place down one of these, let's say here... I think we can just go ahead and do it like this. I'm going to place down a couple of these here. We'll go ahead and construct those. I think it takes one colonist each by default in order to start growing some food. We'll also need to get a trapper. This lets us get some venison. You do want to have different types of food sources so your colonists don't suffer from malnutrition. Exactly how that's calculated, I don't know quite yet. But still... Uh, we want to have some diversity. I'll just go ahead and stick one off over here. This also has a radius, but the radius does not get to move. Uh, what you do want to be careful of, though, is not overlapping your radii, because then it reduces the overall effectiveness of your buildings. Speaking of which, we actually do want to get a water well as well. This does the exact same sort of thing. It's got a little circle right here. If you overlap your water wells, all you've done is made all of them less effective, so do be careful about that. I'm just going to go ahead and place you right here. Something in the corner like so should be fine. Yeah, we got a water shortage, but we'll figure it out. We need to make sure that we are producing more than we consume. And we could eventually build up a water tower, and that would allow us to start stockpiling some of the excess water. For right now, though, I think we are going to be fine. Farm plants are done. Let's go ahead and select a crop type. Corn, or maize, grows at a pretty normal rate and does have a low yield, so it's a pretty fast way of getting some food. You get some every, I don't know, like three or four days or something like that, but you don't get an absolute ton. Alternatively, you also have potatoes, which grow slowly but give you a higher yield. There are different crop types that you can get occasionally throughout the game, either by helping um, some colonists and they give you a gift, or perhaps you trade for it. We'll come back to all of that, but the point is, you want to have a good diversity of crops. Uh, some blights probably can knock out a specific type of crop. I at least imagine that's the case, but I don't know for absolute sure. Water well is done, which means now we have an excess of water. We are not currently producing any food, so the sooner these guys can go and uh, build things like the trapper and the warehouse, the better. Unfortunately, we are all out of plastic, which is a slight problem. So let's go to our resource gathering. The recycler is what we will use to take the spare plastic down over here and convert it into plastic and fiber. Plastic is used as a building material. Fiber is used to create clothing. So let's go ahead and place one of these. Um, we'll place it over, I guess, over here. Doesn't matter a whole lot, but I want it somewhat close to a stockpile, I think. So we'll do something like this. And then I'll also place down a scrapper. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like there's some nuclear waste in the way there, so I can't quite build it where I want to. Right here should be perfectly fine. All right, so as we gather up some more planks and some more concrete, people should try to build this stuff up. Nothing I can do about the warehouse right now. Nothing I can do about the trapper right now. But we'll fix that soon enough. All right, let's see. So you can see the gatherers are going out and just grabbing everything they can get uh, based on the work zone. And as soon as these uh, stockpiles are depleted, I can always just move it somewhere else, which is kind of nice. You don't always have to rebuild stockpiles. Just keep in mind that the further away it is, the more travel time is involved. So... At some point, it does make sense to place a lot of stockpiles, but it's not like I need to place, like, four different gathering huts in order to take advantage of an area. As far as gathering materials, there's also a sawmill, which is good for chopping down trees and getting planks that way. Nice once all of your immediate uh, piles have been exhausted. There's also a forester, which you can use to plant trees and harvest them over time for planks and firewood, which we'll need eventually, um, but not, not this exact second. How are we doing in terms of the recycler? Eh, I just need a bit more resources. Okay, so let me jump forward a little bit so we can get uh, as much content in this video as possible. There are occasionally going to be some events in your camp. So right now we have a commotion, apparently. Someone's yelling inside of a tent. 
uneven ground, muffled cries for help are coming for one of the shelters. You rush in and look what's going on there. Instead of a colonist, you find a large hole in the middle of the floor. It was built on a small sinkhole, which gave in. If we had some planks, we'd be able to tell them to make a ladder. Uh, I guess we can wait until some people have delivered some more planks. Alternatively, these planks are useful. You know what? Just, just climb back up. He looks dumbfounded by my lack of empathy, but then climbs up the crumbling edges. You know what? He's gonna be fine. Why waste resources on a ladder when you could have just climbed up, you lazy bum? Unfortunately, that does reduce the happiness in my colony. Everyone in the colony gets minus two happiness, hence why we now have a disagreement of 10 times two equals minus 20. All right, so the recycler is now done. Let's move our work area to the nearest pile, like so. We can assign two colonists over here to gather up a little bit faster, which I will do. That currently leaves me with three carriers left. Not a lot for gathering resources, but I could really use some plastic if you want to continue with these jobs. Now, as far as population mechanics and getting more workers, there are a couple things. Whoa, that's a meteor. Well, that's highly unfortunate. Okay, so a meteor just fell and smooshed my tent. Nothing else was touched. Very tiny crater. Unfortunately, we're going to have to repair that using plastics, which I currently don't have available. That was unfortunate. Anyway, terms of population. Uh, there are a couple of ways to get more population. You can either build a gate, kind of like a town gate here, and then people will eventually come to your town looking to join. That's a way of getting some easy people into the colony. Or your colonists will be able to start having children. But of course, those children aren't able to work to, uh, right away, so you have to wait for them to reach adulthood. We got three kids right now. The sooner they grow up, the better. But that's probably going to be a little while at least. In the meantime, how are we doing in terms of food? We have only one berry bush left, but that's fine. Is this telling me that I have 25 berries left? And is that a watermelon? Because a watermelon is not a berry. I don't really know. That's fine, though. These planks are almost fully exhausted. We have a little bit of plastic going in. Looks like the trapper is done, so now we have somebody working here to gather up some venison. Again, careful to stagger out your building so you don't accidentally reduce all of their effectiveness. Those berries have been exhausted, so we're just going to casually move the work area over here to these two berry bushes, and good, we have a new source of food. It says right now that we are producing 28 food and consuming only 8. Doesn't seem all that bad. Let me go ahead and move the work area just a little bit right there. Um, now, of course, you are going to be consuming your food um, before the crops are harvested, so it's not like I'm getting 30 food per day. It's... I don't exactly know what time frame it's looking over, but the point is, over the long term, we are producing significantly more food than we are currently consuming. Why is nobody repairing the tent? We've got the plastic. Colonists want to try out a new trap for rabbit season. Three colonists explain they've been working on a new kind of trap. Looks functional, but letting the group venture far away is not without risk. I'll give you permission. Two colonists got radiation sickness. Well, ain't that unfortunate. Okay, we need to go to our health and safety. A medical tent is what we will need in order to take care of our new patients. I will build one over here, I guess. Of course, we don't have enough plastic to make this work, but eventually we'll want to treat them before they die of, you know, radiation poisoning and stuff. Uh, let's just go ahead and... Nah, I'm not going to worry about breaking down the truck quite yet. I don't know why we're not repairing this. I feel like they were supposed to. It's not destroyed enough that people aren't allowed to sleep in it. No one is considered to be uh, homeless, so I think for the time being, it's sort of okay. But they should fix this, eventually. But we just have to wait until we have more carriers. Right now, I only have one, which is not exactly a lot, so I can forgive them, I suppose. We may not actually need all this scrap right now. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and have a second carrier available. We'll come back to this later, but... Metal and uh, parts don't strike me as the most important thing. Medical tent has all the resources they need, so they should be able to start building this as soon as the carriers are done. And another one of our deposits has been completed. That's fine. We'll be able to move you over a little bit later. So are you guys going to start building this? No, they started working on the warehouse first. Now they're working on the medical tent. We should be able to assign a couple of doctors. They will automatically treat people. Each medical tent, I think, has a capacity of only two people. So eventually, for a large colony, you're going to want to have a lot of medical tents. This deposit has been depleted. Let's go work on some of the concrete, I suppose, for the time being. Seems reasonable enough to me. Uh, once this is done, I think I'll just go ahead and take both of my carriers and assign them before anyone dies of irradiation. Because that would obviously not be a great way of starting things. Unfortunately, it appears that everyone now wants to go to sleep. You know, I really hope you're not making your bunkmate sick. I mean, you're radioactive now. Oh, gosh. It's like Imagine Dragons. Radioactive. Radioactive. Kind of fitting, actually, for this uh, post-apocalyptic setting. 
There we go. That's finally done. All right. Let's go ahead and put two uh, doctors in the medical tent. As soon as they wake up, they should be able to go here. Occupants says right now is zero out of two. So the sick people should go over here. Uh, Colonus wants to talk about something. Okay. Someone's irradiated and infected. Hmm, fun. Dumpster diving. Two colonists approach you with sparkling eyes. An old landfill has been found, probably by the stench. It's not too far from here. Although the smell is absolutely awful, it might have kept scavengers away there until now, and it might be valuable stuff. We will send some clothing and tools in order to keep them safe. Now, I don't have a lot of clothing, so this is a little bit risky, but let's give it a go. Somebody got infected, but we did get 11 plastic. Do I think that um, losing my last two clothes and some tools for 11 plastic was worthwhile? Probably not. So we're going to get ourselves a tailor ASAP. Let's place one over here. Uh, relatively close to the warehouses and stuff, I think. That would make a lot of sense. So I'll place one right there. I'm going to go ahead and salvage up the broken truck. We do have a warehouse. They can move things over eventually. So let's just do that now make room for some extra space. Uh, how are we doing as far as treating people? We are making some pretty good progress. I think if the doctors don't have anything to do, it won't show them as carriers, but they'll basically function as carriers. Don't quote me on that. Could be wrong, but I suspect that's how it is going to work. Okay, we have our first catastrophe. Intense and oppressive heat takes over the area as moisture evaporates. Colonists struggle to keep hydrated and cool wall working plants wither in the cracked soil. Colonists will drink double the normal amount of water, so we absolutely have to get another well. Crop yields are going to suffer. And then, yeah, if we can build and fill some water tower, that would certainly be quite nice. Uh, so we have at least a couple of days before the heat wave arrives. There are several different types of catastrophes, ranging from meteor storms to nuclear fallout. Apparently a heat wave. Haven't seen that before. So that's going to be fun. Let's go ahead and assign a doctor over here to make sure that somebody is getting treated. That should be fine. Uh, we have some roads placed down. These are just basic dirt roads. They don't actually cost you anything. And it just makes it a little bit faster for people to walk around. I find that good roads eh, can make a bit of a difference in the long run. Let's go ahead and place down a gate because I do want to make sure that we can get some additional colonists. Uh, we will also want to make sure we get some more water. Again, careful not to place it in the same radius. I wish that it showed you the same radius of the waters, uh, the existing water wells, but I imagine they're going to end up adding that at some point. Maybe. It would make a lot of sense to me. Let's go ahead and place one over here next to the nuclear waste. I'm sure that's not going to irradiate the water supply at all. Should be completely fine. Colonist Lily is homeless. Can't exactly tell you why that's the case, because we haven't increased... No, we have increased our population size. Did we have a baby? I think we had a baby. Okay, it doesn't actually tell you that. We have four children now. So somebody had a baby. Mazel tov. Congratulations. Let's just go ahead and place down another basic tent. That's easy enough. Down the river. A group of colonists have gotten curious about a nearby river and want to see what it's like for traveling. They managed to build a simple raft and are evil to test it out. All right, give it a go. They return empty-handed. Well, sometimes you get something awesome out of that, and sometimes you don't. Can't always get what you want, right? Okay, and now the gate should be finishing up shortly. Colonist Logan somehow got injured. Oh, how would you do that? All right, let's go ahead and assign a new doctor, and boom. The gate appears to be done. Ah, not quite. Just a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and ba-boom. Okay, now we have a gate. So now, new colonists can wander by and say, hey, we'd like to join you, or we can have traders or other various different events. This is pretty nice. Survivors are seeking shelter. Well, that was an early bite. Okay, I didn't expect to find this here. What are you aiming for? A settlement, a town, a city? Well, maybe you'll reach that sooner than you think. I could accept these guys. Three adults, no children, so good workers. I like that. Also, they have some supplies, some tools, and some food. They also have a specialist named Plati, or Plati, I don't know. A great Nordic adventurer who claims to have been the Empress of Sweden before the apocalypse. Okay, specialists are pretty nice because you can use them on the world map to explore new regions, find different salvage, fight bandits, and so on. This particular specialist is pretty decent at research and scavenging and not a whole lot else beyond that. Even so, I could really use a specialist, so let's go ahead and accept them. That does mean we're going to need some more food and water supplies. Uh, food we're actually okay on. Water? Yeah, water we will probably need. Although maybe it'd be worth building a water tower sooner rather than later. Just so we can store some of these extra resources. Yeah, I think that's actually probably wise. Um, where do I want to place it? How about right over here? Let's go ahead and start stocking up some of that extra water before the heat wave arrives. We may have to build up a new well. And then let's also place down yet another tent. Kind of fits nicely right here, so that's great. Okay, cool. 
Uh, and then we should have a specialist available. Now, specialists have action points, which I'll show you in just a moment. We don't have enough resources. Ah, not enough planks. Got it. Uh, specialists have action points, right? And those recharge, I think, twice a day. So we're probably waiting until we actually have some uh, uh, action points, and then we can use our specialist for something. Abandoned property. One of the colonists rushes towards you, spotted something. Use tools? Sure, I'm going to search the wagon, but arm the colonists. Okay, they found some components and some plastic. There was a sickness that killed two people. Okay? I don't know if there are special events where maybe you get uh, ambushed. That would make a lot of sense. Kind of hope not, though. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and get somebody working here on the trapping. Okay. Deposit of planks is exhausted. Another one has been exhausted. Okay. Move you over, let's say, here. We'll gather from the concrete ruins and a bunch more planks like so. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. We need some tools. Yeah, we're going to need to get ourselves a toolsmith. That should be fine, though, because we actually have some additional workers now, so we can actually start converting some of that excess metal. Logan is still being treated, taking a very long dang time. Specialist, are you ready to do any exploring? Yes? No? Maybe? I don't know. Can you repeat the question? Oh, there she is. Okay, we actually are ready to do that right now. Perfect. So, this is our specialist, and this is the world map. There's a bunch of different regions that we can explore, and each one of them, I think, is guaranteed to have at least some deposit of something you can scavenge. In our home region, we actually have a farm with 34 jerky. Now, you can see that there is a potential hazard. Here, there's none. It's 0 out of 3. But there are potentially hazards in some of these scavenging uh, piles, which could injure or even kill your specialist, so you got to be careful about that. I don't really care about food right now. We're actually doing fine on that front. So I'm going to select Platy and try to explore a new region. Every hex it moves is going to use up one action point. Exploring a region or gathering something uses up all of the action points. Now here we actually find we're starting with some science. If we gather the science points, we could use that for some early technology. Try to get some extra production methods, maybe some more food, etc. That could be useful. Not sure I need it right now. The basic resources are more important to me than science, but that is interesting. I tend to prioritize a lot of early exploration, gather as much intelligence as I can while I can, and then we'll figure out the rest a little bit later. I really need planks. Okay, let's go to some resource gathering. I need a sawmill. That's what I need. Uh, can't place one over there. How about up over... How about one up over here? Something like this is probably fine. Yeah, let's go for something up over here. Close to the stockpile so we can quickly drop off all of our extra load. We'll use this to start gathering up some planks uh, using lumber sources instead of waiting on carriers to gather from the plank piles. All right, the heat wave has officially hit, and we do indeed have a water shortage. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the water tower since it's kind of too little too late at this point. Let's go ahead and get down another water well somewhere. So not one over there. Not one over here. We could place one probably over in this area, and that would be fine. So let's just go ahead and place one there. I'm going to make this a high priority for construction using what little planks we have and some extra concrete. Though I don't have a whole lot of concrete left, so that's a bit of a problem. Specialist is ready for some more action. Okay, let's go ahead and explore these regions. So we have six action points. There goes one. There goes two. Exploring the region will take up the remaining. We find a source of tools. There are three tools in this manufactory. Okay, if we wanted to scavenge those and bring them back home, that wouldn't be such a bad idea, given that, you know, I don't have a whole lot of tools remaining. No idea, by the way, how uh, long this heat wave is going to last. So I'm going to go ahead and start harvesting the um, fields a little bit early before they wither and die. Try to get as much as I can out of this. We might lose some crops. I'm not too sure. I'm all right on food right now, but eventually that's going to end up being pretty important. If we can please construct this water well a little bit sooner, that would be lovely. Yes? No? Carriers? What are you guys working on right now? The tool shop? I think you might be working on the tool shop. That's fine. Use some of my scrap metal. That's, that's going to be just fine and dandy. All right. Well, in theory, eventually they'll work on this. Some people are dehydrating, though, because... Yep, they decided they wanted to start working on the sawmill rather than working on the water well. No, oh, that's good. Okay. Hunting opportunity. Hunt down a bear. No! Five happiness to the colony goes down. Yeah, everyone's a little unhappy right now. Everyone's dehydrated. Yeah, no, don't attack a bear. You guys are thinking way too highly of yourself. You are not going to be able to beat down a dang bear. Ain't happening. Ain't happening none at all. 
All right, sawmill, sure. Let's go ahead and do this first since that was the most important thing. Boom, that's done. Don't have a lot of concrete left. Can you please finish up with the water well? We have enough concrete, cool. Just get me a little bit of lumber. All right, they're starting construction. If we can get that before anyone dies of dehydration, that would be lovely. Uh, the tent is also being constructed. Specialist ready for some more action? Let's explore right here. See what we've got. More science. Usually I find some construction materials or something by now, but uh, okay. No, that's fine. Different types of terrain, by the way, probably cost you extra points. I think I have seen that. So it's entirely possible you won't be able to go a full number of hexes based on your action points. Maybe climbing over a hill or going through a forest is a little bit tougher. Which makes sense to me. Got no objection to that. All right, right here, we're going to go ahead and move the work area to this general vicinity, clear out some additional space, chop down the trees, get a new source of planks so we don't have a recurring issue. What I do need is a heck of a lot more concrete. That's going to be important for me. Come on, guys, please work on the water well a little bit sooner. Violet got injured. I don't know exactly how she did it. Maybe she fell down the well. Somebody call Lassie. Ah, good. The heat wave finally broke. All right, now we got plenty more water coming in. What's going on here? A looting local. One of your colonists has spotted the sort of vehicle stuck down in a crevasse. It might have something useful. All right, let's go ahead and try. Somebody got injured, but we did get three medicine. That could be helpful. If somebody is uh, suffering from, let's say, radiation sickness, giving them some iodine tablets could be extremely helpful for me. Let's go ahead and assign somebody here in the plastic area since we want to make sure we're working on that. Okay, what I really need now are some more colonists, because I'm running low on carriers, and everyone currently has an assigned job. If we could just get a little bit more concrete, I'd be a lot happier. But for now, we're looking pretty good. We can just sort of sit back and wait for a bit longer. Okay, I have our specialists exploring the map, and we found our first bandit camp. These are organized bandits. They have an attack value and a defense value. I'm not super sure how this works yet. Because our scavengers also have an attack and defense value. I believe if their attack value is not high enough to overcome their defense, they don't take any damage. If the bandit is still alive by the time we do our first attack, they get to counterattack, and they can injure your specialist. If your specialist is injured, you can just take them right back to the camp, and they'll heal up there over time. But yeah, eventually, if you want to get this log pile, we're going to have to get some more specialized fighters and come back here and beat the snot out of them. Okay, this looks kind of weird. What the heck is going on here? Are these a bunch of little wild hotelinas? They look like rats or bugs or something. I don't really know. Something was running around in my potato fields, and I don't feel very good about it. Now, I have found a bit of a risky opportunity for us in the world map. There's a concrete source right here, but you can see that there is a potential hazard. A 33% chance of danger right? Which in theory means that our colonist is going to be taking some damage. Now that's fine with me. I'm okay with gathering up some concrete, going home and healing for a little while. So I think I will take that risk, but that's something that I assume is going to be progressively becoming more and more frequent as you get far, further and further away from your base. Makes sense to me. I don't know for sure, but it just makes sense to me. The further away you get, the more dangerous the world becomes. And the world apparently is pretty darn large, so there is a lot of potential for exploration. We have an odd fellow at the gates. Okay, who would this be? Dr. Wizard MD. A very peculiar man approaches you, arms stretched out well in advance for a handshake. Hello, 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 I'm back. Where am I? Was I here before? Science and magics, special patent pending formula. I don't have anyone who's sick, so I'm gonna say no. No? But as a carefully researched mixture of corn flour, herbs, and antelope, each with a pinch of crushed glowy rock. I spared no expense to developing it, okay. Weird guy trying to give me his snake oil. Even in a post-apocalyptic world, you can never escape him. All right, specialist, go grab that concrete. Is it dangerous? Do you take any damage? Nah, she got out scot-free. She's probably not gonna die. It's not that big of a hazard. She might lose like 20 hit points or something, but I'm sure she'll be fine. There's only two concrete left here. She's capable of gathering apparently 32 in one shot. So the question then becomes, is it worth waiting an entire half day for her to get action points just to grab two more concrete? The answer is probably no, but because I don't like leaving any stone unturned, I'll probably grab it anyway. Now I did place down a few little bushes over here and it looks like it did not get me any happiness, so that is unfortunate. Four more adults want to join and they have Crow with them, a specialist who's pretty decent at attacking. I like that. Also really good with exploration, so extra action points. You got some food, some tools, and some clothing. Works for me. Welcome to the party. 
So I'm gonna have Crow go over here and gather up some science, and you can see that automatically gets dumped into the stockpile. No need to return home, it just got 120 science points. So if we go to our tech tree over here, you can see that we have a few different options. As far as food, we could go for communal eating. This allows us to build a cookhouse, which takes different types of food and turns them into meals, which is a bit more nut um, nutritious. So that could be helpful. Also, we can have logging camps, which provides firewood, which we will need in order to operate our cookhouse. So that's an option for us, and that will lead to things like advanced farming. Eventually, we can have insects for alternative proteins or protect the crops, etc. Chef training. Production, we have energy production. Not too sure what this is going to do for me right now. Uh, requires advanced materials such as parts and components to be built. Feels like kind of a late game thing, not something I want right away. Colony, we could go for communal leaving, which gives uh, better shelter types. We could also work toward things like education, so we have uh, children have a place to be during the course of the day, and when they become adults, they're more effective, so that makes sense. Remembrance, comfortable housing, knowledge preservation with libraries. Are these ways of us actually gathering up some additional uh, science, or do you only get it from exploration? Not too sure yet. Security, general storage, bigger warehouses, and also eventually hazmat engineering we can use to clear out some of those nuclear piles of um, uh, leftover waste. That could be helpful. And exploration, bartering if we want to have other societies come over here for trading more often, disaster forecast, and so on. I think we're going to go ahead and grab the communal eating. We'll start with that, and we can build ourselves a cookhouse and try to get a little bit more value out of my food. Now let's see, as far as the cookhouse placement, I think we'll just go ahead and place it up over here, maybe? Sure, somewhat close to the stockpiles. And then, yeah, we are going to need a logging camp to chop down trees and turn it into firewood. Where do I want to place that? Maybe over here? Nope, there's nuclear waste in the way. Never mind, can't do that. Place it over here? Nope, can't do that. We got other stuff in the way. Gosh dang it! A couple was arguing, and they were quite loud about it, so that led to an event. Children's rights. A couple comes to you asking if the colony has any rules about parenting. The mother thinks the children should be tasked with handling domestic work. The father thinks they're too young and should be allowed to play. Side with the mother. Side with the father. Plan to have the children educated. That is my plan. You agree the children should pitch in, but don't think taking over the domestic tasks is the best idea. You promise to look into educating them in a way which would include light domestic work as a means to teach responsibility. Huh, I haven't seen that before, so that's kind of like little decisions. Um, I wonder if we had sided with the mother, maybe the children would not have gone to the schools? Like, is there any downside to doing that? I mean, it's obviously a big downside of them not going to school if I built the school, because I want them to be ed come educated, but I'm curious, like, in the meantime, would that have been a way to get the children to actually become, like, temporary carriers? Maybe? I don't really know, but okay. Alright, we have a cookhouse. We can select a recipe. Now, right now, I don't think... Actually, I got a pretty reasonable amount of venison and various different vegetation, so we could go for a mil mixed healthy meal. Alternatively, there is a stew made from insects, or a carnivore's uh, dream, or perhaps a vegetarian meal, based on whatever you have currently available. Uh, this seems kind of reasonable. In order to make this work, though, we are going to need a logging camp, so that's just going to be idle for the moment. Let's move the work area to over here, for example. We'll start gathering up some lumber, turn that into firewood, cook some bigger meals, and that should be good. Alright, we finally get to drop off our load of 34 more concrete, like so, so that's going to be helpful. We have 140 science points now. Anything else we want to work on right now? Uh, how about communal living so we can have different types of shelter available? Start getting rid of these tents. Maybe something a little bit more sophisticated. Also something that can protect people from radiation. In the meantime, we're going to have uh, Platy just sort of sit around here in the village. And she'll regenerate her health automatically. Looks like our recycler has used up the remaining plastic. We're going to go ahead and just move the work area over here. A little bit further away, so I'm not sure if that means we're going to get a bit slower in terms of our production. But at least we have something available. So that's not so bad. Alright, so with that tech, we have some new shelters available, including tenements which can be used to house eight people. It's a very cost-effective form of housing for several colonists. Uh, yeah, in terms of overall cost, this is five lumber, six concrete, and six... I'm sorry, eight uh, metal. This is 25 lumber, so it's a lot more lumber, double the concrete, less than double the metal, but you can house eight people instead of three, so if you're willing to spend a lot more lumber, I think this is ultimately the more concrete and metal efficient manner of housing your people so um yeah i think we're gonna go ahead and do some of that let's go ahead and just salvage up some of these tents and get rid of them 
This is why I like to build things in nice little blocks like this, because I can just replace them with tenements like so. And it's technically a little bit more space efficient, which is great. So we're just going to place you right there, for example. And now we're just replacing structures with something that's going to be a bit hardier and more resilient for the future if there is another catastrophe. A wandering merchant is coming nearby. Nice truck, dude. Nice hat, too. A big van brimming with miscellaneous items and goods. We could trade away 15 berries to get 5 clothing. That's not a bad deal. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take that. All right. Berries seem relatively cheap to me. But clothing? Clothing is pretty helpful, especially when we didn't have a ton left. All right, let's see. So this colonist here, let's just go ahead and finish off the last bit of this science. There we go. Um, we're going to have Crow go and explore in these different directions, I think. Maybe we'll come back up here and pick up... Uh, I don't know if I necessarily want the electronic components. Plastics we're okay on. There is more food. Right now we're actually okay on food. So yeah, I think we'll just continue exploring for a little bit longer. Uh-oh, we got our next catastrophe. It's a meteor shower. This one's gonna suck. Before the apocalypse, people said that when you see a shooting star, you can make a wish and it'll come true. It's hard to believe, because nowadays when you see a shooting star, we always hope to live through the day. But it never works. Sky turns red as burning rocks fall through the atmosphere and tense showers of deadly objects plummet towards the colonies and cause widespread damage. Yeah, this one's actually really gonna hurt. Might hit buildings, will absolutely hit buildings. Reserve some construction materials, okay? Have some carriers on hand and keep better shelters. Yeah, that would be nice, we have a couple of days. I would gladly get rid of some of these tents in order to get more tenements and keep people nice and safe. I don't know how well that's gonna work. Uh, let's take Crow and attack some bandits I found, because they only have one defense. They've got 11 attack, which means they can really, really hurt Crow. But I'm wondering if she's going to be able to get the drop on him and kill him right away, because she has significantly better defense. But hang on, let's take a look at that. So, 4 attack, 11 attack, 4 defense, 1 defense. I'm not sure exactly how to read this, because those aren't the numbers I was expecting. She's got 3 attack and 1 defense, not 4. And he's supposed to have... 11 and 1, not 11 and 4. Let's try this. Hopefully Crow doesn't die, but that's okay. We're experimenting today. It's fine. So she did not kill them. They punched her back. Um, she has been injured. So has he. Not by much, though, unfortunately. So it would be a very costly attack if we continue the assault. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to end up being worthwhile. Well, okay. So maybe it's because we had a... No? I was going to say, we did one damage. I was wondering if it had something to do with the fact that we had more attack than defense, and if that extra value is what it takes. Maybe not, though. A bandit is at the gate, and he's acting odd. Uh-oh. He approaches the gate with a hefty backpack, bursting out the seams with blueprints, measuring sticks, and other items. Oi, oi, might I address whomever's in charge? A master builder is here, and you better listen. He's building a monument and needs something. Accept the offer. Lose planks, gain cabbage. I don't necessarily need that. Do you have anything more exciting to trade? Do I look like a dealer of flesh to you? Me? I'm an honest bandit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would have I would have traded him the metal. But I mean, well, whatever. It's not like I need some meds right now. We'll be all right. Still, that was interesting. I don't know how all these events work yet. You try them. Sometimes they work. Looks like a few more refugees want to join. This time they bring along Jin, who's really good at exploration. Lots of action points there. Okay, that seems fine. A few more materials, some children and stuff. Yeah, come on in. I mean, there's only going to be a murderous meteor shower in just a moment, but we can afford to build another tenement for you. Sure. By all means, let's, let's go for it. You head over here and do some exploration or something. I don't know. You get up over here. We did find a diner with some canned fruits, which is nice and all. Not sure that's a top priority, but it is nice. We are absolutely surrounded by bandits, though, which I'm finding a little bit bizarre. It wasn't nearly this bad in my test game leading up to all this, but okay. Any minute now, I'm expecting the heavens to open up and all hell to break out to destroy us. This is going to be terrifying. Here it comes! Oh, no, there it is. Tried building some general storage to protect my goods, but now everyone's really sad and upset because we're going to get hit by freaking meteors. Okay. No, it's great. Um, well, we can go ahead and change out our metal pile. Uh, where should we go with this one? There's one really far away. Is that it? We got one way up here. All right. Youch. Okay, that's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, yep. Okay. There goes a meteor. Boom. Um, and we should just go ahead and cancel this. We'll figure out housing for you guys later. Okay. Cancel that. Get the materials. We need some repairing stuff. Medical tent needs some plastics. It's fine. 
What else we got? Anything else? Come on! Do your worst! Hit me! Hit me with your meteors! Boom! It actually hasn't been so bad so far. It's been all right. Whoop, whoop, boom, what hit? They hit my well. Freaking tiny well in the middle of some trees and he got bullseyed. What are the odds of that one? Pretty good when the game is out to get you, I think. All right, nothing to do here but just sort of sit back and weather the storm. Glad I had a little bit of extra uh, lumber sitting around. Let's repair the cookhouse. Uh, buildings absolutely can be completely destroyed. That will very likely happen. What's going on here? Down the river. Oh, now's the time to go rafting down the river. Okay, thank you for the fish. Great timing, lovely, beautiful. Cookhouse has been critically damaged. No, not the logging camp. Ah, when will it end? Pretty soon, actually, and I think it's over. There we go, all right. So we got some couriers who should be able to go around and repair the colony, but all in all, we came through that okay. Just need to put the cookhouse fire out and then build some new housing. All in all, that wasn't half bad. All right, well, I feel like this is a pretty good place to end this here video. But uh, I actually think that this game has a lot of promise. This seems pretty darn fun. It reminds me of a few other survival colony builders that I've played before on this channel. And I like the theme of it with the post-apocalyptic world. And so far, this colony looks pretty legit. So I'm happy with this. I think this could be pretty fun over the next year, but I'm looking forward to seeing how Paradox Interactive and their partners are going to continue developing it in the future. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope you found this video to be entertaining and informative. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the notify bell, and I, as always, will see you guys next time.